Hi, and thank you for tuning in. Today we're going to talk about the Blind series. This is a series of books that's written by myself, Linda Riesenberg Fissler, and I thought I'd take a few minutes and talk about the books and the characters and get you um, up to speed with what's been going on uh, with the, the next book in this series, book two. So currently available out in the market right now are Blind Intention, which is a prequel novella. It features three short stories on the three central characters, and then the book one in the series, which was my debut novel, it is called Blind Influence. So let's start with Blind Intention. Uh, as I said, it's three short stories, one on each of the three central characters in the series. And we'll start with the female central and or main character, Nicole Charbonneau. Uh, Nicole is from the Midwest. She grew up, um, you know, very much a Midwestern girl. Uh, her parents were uh, very active in the community and um, she ends up going to Harvard Law School. And we had to do a lot of research on this because it's, since the actual debut novel takes place in 1979, I had to go back and look at um, Harvard Law because that's where I wanted Nicole to go to and found some very interesting things. Um, In 1964, this is the first class that was fully integrated, meaning that the women could attend class on Harvard's campus for the Harvard Law School. It's the first class whose degrees um, said, for women, said Harvard Law School instead of Radcliffe. So I went back and did a lot of research on this. There were like 566 men in this class uh, to 22 women. That, got, that were accepted. And uh, out of that 22 women, um, 15 actually graduated. These women were probably harassed every day. Um, they were really the first experiment to see if women could survive going to Harvard uh, Law School. And um, two very famous women, uh, very well-known women, I should say, uh, came out of that class, and one was Judith Richards Hope, and she wrote a book called Pinstripe and Pearls, and that was about her experience of going uh, to Harvard Law School and being part of the first class that was truly integrated into the um, Harvard campus and school. And then the other uh, well-known person was Pat Schroeder, who, who ended up becoming a Democratic um, representative and House of Representative later on, and, and now I believe she's involved in a number of different fundraising um, activities and companies. Um, so I basically took Nicole's carrier, character and inserted her into this group of women. Um, again, 22 out of 566, um, 566 men, 22 women, 15 of these women graduated. So Nicole was one of the lucky ones that graduated. Out of the 22, one committed suicide. Um, and then, as again, uh, Judith and, and Pat went on to be to, you know, very, very good careers. As a matter of fact, Judith is actually back teaching at Harvard Law School now. So um, very interesting path for them. So Nicole graduates from law school um, and, and the, in blind intention. Uh, Nicole's short story is about her experience at Harvard Law. So then... Another character in the book is Sean Atkins, and Sean is our British agent, our M6, MI6 agent. And um, Sean comes from a very prominent family in England. Uh, his father is Lord Peter Atkins, and he is actually in the House of Lords. And um, his brother is also uh, taking the political route, and he is in the House of Commons um, serving there. And Sean, because his mother was killed in a um, IRA attack at a train station, just as I, this is in, in the time, and again, in 1964, when the IRA was just um, trying to come to power and, and was really beginning to organize. And because his mom was, was killed in this um, attack, Sean decides that he is going to uh, become part of MI6. So he goes to Fort Moncton, and he trains, and this whole short story in Blind Intention is about his time there um, at Fort Munkin and what happens when they go on their final reconnaissance test. 
Um, and so I'm not going to spoil any of that for you, but it's very interesting and it ties into where blind influence um, is in 1979. So that's kind of the beginning of that. And then the other central character to the series is Senator Robert Jenkins. And Senator Jenkins is a Democrat, and he is from North Carolina at a time when North Carolinians elected Democrats. It's very, um, very interesting how North Carolina's political, um, if you, political history, if you will, how things have changed in, in that state uh, based on what research I've done back in the 1960s, 70s, 80s, and 90s and then where it is now in 2016. It's it's a real shocker actually. Um, but anyway, Senator Robert Jenkins is from um, a very, uh, I don't want to say average, but um, just, you know, a very loving family. Uh, his father was part of the Raiders, um, which is highly influences uh, Bobby, um, as he likes to be called, uh, his, his path in life. Uh, he's, you know, peering through the, the, the staircase looking down as his father and their friends on a Friday night are, um, you know, drinking and, and sitting around and talking. And his mom is from France and he learns and hears about all this swashbuckling, um, you know, tales that his father spins about being in France um, back, you know, in World War II and how he met his mother. And, and, um, and then because of this, um, Senator Jenkins decides that it's very much you know, in, in him to go into the military. He has a sister as well, and there's a story about that I'm not going to go into because it's covered in, this, in the short story in Blind Intention um, and what happens to her. And uh, he uh, actually enters the military at a time when Senator, or Senator President Kennedy uh, has decided that um, we need some special forces. So he's, he uh, pulls together and and says we're going to create the Navy SEALs, for example, one of the elite groups. And so uh, Senator Jenkins, um, at the time just Bobby Jenkins, decides that he's going to go into the Navy SEALs. So that takes us up to Blind Influence. This is a uh, three-time award-winning book. Uh, it won uh, honorable mention at the Paris Book Festival 14 days after its launch. It's won uh, honorable mention at the Hollywood Book Festival and also at the Great Midwest Book Festival. Um, so for my debut novel to come out with three award-winning, you know, three awards um, for the first book that I ever published, I was in the fiction genre. I, I, I was so honored and, and so excited. Um, I, I can remember getting notification that, you know, it came in as honorable mention in the Paris Book Festival and you know, I, I really remember, you know, literally having tears in my eyes and, and being so shocked um, that it had won. But uh, so I very, 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 very um, happy about that and very, very honored. But the story itself is set in 1979. And again, Nicole Charbonneau is really the uh, central character in all of these, the main character in all of these books. Um, and it's kind of her life and and the reason why it's called the blind series is because she's blind to a lot of things that keep popping up and changing her life course and um she you know she's really kind of struggles with this uh throughout this this whole series in blind influence she has left her uh, district attorney job um, and she's joined a firm a very prominent firm in um, dc and um, where she has met uh, Tony Schaefer, who is one of the founding fathers of the co-founders of the the uh, firm. It's Rosen, Rosen, Schaefer, and Pruitt. And Tony takes her, um, you know, to to state dinners in the White House because Tony's friends with President Stevens, and uh, so she she's meeting senators and she's meeting very prominent and important people. Uh, while she's also on the other side of, of this, she's getting off all of these um, white collar crime, um, above the law type of uh, folks, um, basically who Tony pulls in a number of favors for, from. Um, so she's, uh, you know, a far cry from where she used to be in the district attorney's office where she was trying murder cases and different things like that. So um, she is actually... 
um, she meets Senator Jenkins at one of the state dinners, and she is actually uh, pulled into this circle that happens. Um, an international assassin is hired to kill the president, and um, she gets drawn into this uh, whole string of th <laughs> of events that happen um, at that point on. Again, I don't want to go into too much of the plot because it's, it is a mystery, and, and I don't want to give it away. Uh, but she naturally, through this chain of events, this chain reaction that happens, she is um, she meets uh, Senator Jenkins and she meets uh, Sean Atkins uh, as well. So uh, where these guys come into it, Sean is is tracking the international assassin, um, and they're both in the United States. It's the first time that the serpent had come to the United States. Uh, to to perform a, a duty to pre perform a job um, so they're all in Washington DC basically and then um, from there the the story goes on um, and Senator Jenkins has a history with Sean as well uh, and that goes back uh, to when Sean's um, well let's just say it involves Sean's family because uh, that again is something I don't want to give away um, so Blind Intention talks about their past in like 1964. Blind Influence is 1979 and the end of the, the, the November, December time frame in 1979. So then we have Blind Persuasion. Blind Persuasion picks up pretty much where Blind Influence um, ends. It's New Year's and um, in, 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 Nikki, Nicole, is very much looking forward to a year of peace and quiet. So um, whether that happens or not is, is a whole another matter. Of course, if it happens, it wouldn't be a story. But uh, so Blind Persuasion is another mystery suspense book. Um, and it really sets up, uh, continues to set up the story and it continues to set things up for a book three. Um, I'm actually, I was actually thinking that there would only be one book in this series, one book, period. But um, then I decided that we needed to write a second book, and and now I'm I'm finding that I actually need to write a third book as well. And um, that, while I have a lot of um, things left over in the free write that I can put into book three, um, the title and the name of book three and um, the actual outline and plot points haven't been decided yet. Um, and I can't tell you what book three will be about if I don't tell you what book two is about. And I don't want to tell you too much about book two because if I do, it gives away the story. But um, it does, again, focus on uh, Nicole and Sean and Bobby. And um, it does start out in Washington, D.C. And Sean has kind of, um, you know, he, he he's around, but he's not around. And... I, you know, it's really kind of funny trying to be a little mysterious when I talk about this because I, I really, the more I talk about like book two, the more I'll give away in book one. And if you haven't read book one, you really need to read book one. Um, so Blind Persuasion, like I said, it, it's a continuation of Nicole's life and uh, all the things in it that, you know, keep tripping her up. And um, she has some high expectations of Bobby Jenkins and um, she finds herself kind of torn between the two men, between Sean and between Bobby. Um, there's a whole number of things. This, this book, while it has a lot of Nicole in it, um, really focuses more on, on Bobby and a little bit more political intrigue. Um, Bobby decides that he's going to run for president, and he's very young, um, so he's not really under the illusion that he's going to win but he does decide to run and there's a number of things that happen during that uh, that run for presidency that um, you know really uh, make him stop makes him stop and think about is this something that he wants to do and and it, the interesting part of this is when I was doing this research it really became apparent to me that there was this whole paradigm shift, if you will, um, at that time that led us down the course of where we are today in, in our politics. And uh, so it's really kind of interesting that we've gotten to this point that we're at. And I keep asking myself, 
if we had one opportunity back in the 70s and 80s where one politician stood up and did something different, where would we be today? What would politics be like today? Um, where would campaign finance re, you know, be, reform be? Where, you know, would it be as toxic as it is? Would it be so drama-laden um, as it is today? So that was kind of a question that I got into uh, asking at the end of Blind Influence and at the beginning of Blind Persuasion. And, you know, while this, this blows this thing up, it, it, there's another conspiracy. There's a number of conspiracies in here. And, and you know, what would happen if, if one of those conspiracies was actually explained and um, actually gave the American public some credit around, um, you know, making decisions for themselves and being intelligent and being able to decide, make decisions for themselves. So that's kind of a, a, another one of the themes that's that's in these books. Um, so Blind Persuasion will come out in May of 2016, um, and it will be available at Amazon and in paperback and in Kindle. And um, of course, you you know you really got to read book one, so you might as well go out to that area that, out to Amazon now and order Blind Influence, download Blind Intention. Um, it's free. All you need to do is sign up for my newsletter, and my newsletter keeps you up to date not only on my writing but also my art um, podcasts, art chat podcasts, and any um, art related or uh, book related uh, appearances that I'll be making. Um, I'm, I start off in May of 19th, 20th, 21st right now in Cleveland, Tennessee at a book signing and book talk tour there. And um, hopefully I'll have a few more cities to announce uh, as we uh, get closer to that time. And I'll also have a, a book launch up at Austin Landing and uh, Miamisburg, Ohio at Booksellers of Austin Landing. And I'll be having some in my uh, hometown of Middletown, ten, uh, Ohio, Middletown, Ohio, um, at various places there. And I am available to also talk um, about you know the books and, and give various talks as I have done in the past. Um, also, we continue to do our self-publishing series up at Austin Book Landing as well and hope that you can join us. That's out on a, a meetup site. Uh, there's the next uh, three have been planned and um, the next one, uh, we're going to be talking about author platforms and we're going to be talking about book marketing um, and we're actually splitting that up into a number of talks so that we can just deal with certain things at that point, uh, you know, certain aspects of the, of the marketing um, of a book. So uh, that's pretty much uh, up that's pretty much it, I think. Um, so again, blind intention, blind influence, blind persuasion, all part of the blind series. And thanks for tuning in and listening. And um, I hope I kind of piqued your interest a little bit in these mystery suspense novels uh, that I've been writing. Have a good night, everyone.